Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering diversity training. Diversity training gets wrecked as a new study proves it activates bigotry. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from Zero Hedge, diversity training increases prejudice and activates bigotry among participants, according to a new study. Diversity, equity, and inclusion DEI training is divisive and counterproductive and can even serve to increase prejudice among participants, according to a new study by a Canadian professor. David Haskell released his study for the Aristotle Foundation by Public Policy on February 12th. The social scientist and associate professor at Wilfrid Laurier University says DEI training does more harm than good and calls his findings a reality check. Quote, a growing number of high-profile cases suggest that diversity workshops and their supporting materials regularly promote questionable claims, particularly about the overarching malicious character of the majority population. Similarly, hostility towards those who challenge DEI claims is part of the pattern. The national and international research shows there is often a disconnect between the evidence and the claims of DEI advocates. In an extreme example, Richard Bilkso, a 60-year-old Toronto District School Board principal who challenged DEI claims, took his own life on July 13, 2023. His lawyer, Lisa Bildy, suggested that harassment he received following DEI training in 2021 directly contributed to his death. A Workplace Safety and Insurance Board ruling confirmed that he had been the subject of workplace harassment and bullying. Claims that Canada and other Western countries are systemically racist are not borne out by a statistic analysis of differences in outcomes, Mr. Haskell's paper states. It cites Foundation colleague Matthew Lau, who wrote, quote, The data on disparities in income, educational attainment, occupational outcomes, and public school test scores show that on average, Asians are doing better than the white population. The paper also argues that the purported positive results of DEI training are as questionable as its premise and that a focus on, quote, implicit bias, white privilege, and microaggressions do not foster harmony. Quote, to prove the effectiveness of DEI instruction, proponents often point to surveys conducted before and after workshops that show, following training, Participants are much more likely to articulate answers that align with the pro-DEI ideas, Mr. Haskell wrote. This type of methodology has drawn criticism and has proven to be unreliable. In an annual review of psychology published in 2022, U.S. research psychologists Patricia Devine and Tori Ash criticized DEI proponents' proxy measures for success that are far removed from the types of consequential outcomes that reflect the purported goals of such trainings. The authors concluded, quote, implementation of DT, diversity training, has clearly outpaced the available evidence that such programs are effective in achieving their goals. Positive results for diversity training are negligible. Numerous systemic reviews and meta-analysis reviewed by Mr. Haskell similarly found that positive results from DEI training are undetectable or negligible. In their annual review of psychology published in 2009, then Harvard professor Elizabeth Pollock and then Yale professor Donald Green examined 985 studies and found, quote, due to weaknesses in the internal and external validity of existing research, the literature does not reveal whether, when, and why interventions reduce prejudice in the world. A subsequent meta-analysis by Ms. Pollock, Mr. Green, and two other researchers published in 2021 reviewed 418 experiments reported in over 300 manuscripts from 2007 to 2019 and found support for DEI as dubious as before. Quote, although these studies report optimistic conclusions, we identify troubling indications of publication bias that may exaggerate effects. Mr. Haskell said the harms of DEI are more clear than its benefits. Quote, DEI instruction has been shown to increase prejudice and activate bigotry among participants by bringing existing stereotypes to the top of their minds or by implanting new biases they had not previously held. In 2018, Harvard sociologist Frank Dobbin and colleague Alexandra Kalev published, quote, Why doesn't diversity training work? The challenge for industry and academia in the journal Anthropology Now. Quote, hundreds of studies dating back to the 1930s suggest that anti-bias training doesn't reduce bias, alter behavior, or change the workplace. The authors wrote, 
field and laboratory studies find that asking people to suppress stereotypes tends to reinforce them, making them even more cognitively accessible to people. As far back as 1994, Neil McRae at UK-based University of Aberdeen wrote in a paper for a social psychology journal that the strategy of repressing stereotypic thoughts can have a rebound effect. Quote, when people attempt to suppress unwanted thoughts, these thoughts are likely to subsequently reappear with even greater insistence than if they had never been suppressed. Mr. Haskell said DEI training can create a sense of isolation and demoralization in people belonging to the dominant culture because they are depicted as fundamentally depraved, either racist, sexist, or sadistic, while other groups are depicted as important and worthwhile. In a 2020 study, Musa al Garbi, a sociologist and assistant professor at New York-based Stony Brook University, found that this clear double standard leads many from the dominant group to walk away from the training believing that themselves, their culture, their perspectives, and interests are not valued at the institution. Quote, the training also leads many to believe that they have to walk on eggshells when engaging with members of minority populations, he wrote. As a result, members of the dominant group become less likely to try to build relationships or collaborate with people from minority populations. Aaron Cooley, an associate professor of psychological and brain sciences at New York-based Colgate University, found in a 2019 paper that among social liberals, learning about white privilege, quote, reduces sympathy, increases blame, and decreases external attributions for white people struggling with poverty. In an interview with the Epic Times, Mr. Haskell explained the logic behind this outcome. Quote, they were even more hostile towards poor whites because those people must be categorically lazy or dysfunctional because they have privilege. Why are they not successful, he said. Of course, white privilege completely ignores the thousands of other variables that go into every person, white or black or indigenous. There are so many things that can cause social and economic distress. Mr. Haskell said those of Asian descent often succeed in the West due to their high rates of two-parent families and emphasis on hard work, higher education, and personal responsibility. Yet because this success challenges DEI doctrines of white dominance, Asians get reclassified as whites. Quote, school boards in the United States under the influence of DEI ideology and training. They begin to deny the existence of Asians and simply call them white. They put them all into one category, he said. Quote, white was the catch-all term for oppressor. And so the better you do, the more oppressive you are. In a 2023 submission to the U.S. Supreme Court, students of Asian descent were shown to need entrance exam scores 450 points higher than black people to have the same chance of admission at Harvard and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. The combined highest score of math and verbal skills was 1,600, so Asians needed to be nearly perfect. In the summer of 2023, the U.S. Supreme Court struck down the racial quotas as unconstitutional and in violation of federal civil rights law. Mr. Haskell argues in his paper that Canada is different. Quote, well, Canada has no such legislation. In fact, our Charter of Rights and Freedoms and our human rights laws allow for discrimination against the majority population. This constitutional allowance has now resulted in employment postings that, in the name of DEI, explicitly promote reverse or recycled racism. In the interview, Haskell said the riots following the death of George Floyd opened the spigot larger than ever before on DEI spending. He hopes his analysis will empower business, government, post-secondary institutions, and public schools to reverse course. Haskell said DEI trainers are well paid to do what they do and may sincerely believe they are doing good work despite the findings he outlines. However, he believes proponents at the highest level use DEI instruction, quote, to destroy the existing society. They just want to be able to place blame in the absence of evidence, and that's what they're doing, Haskell said. We have a real history in the West of snake oil being passed off the scholarship, and this is just another example of that in a long, long line of con games. After hearing about all of that, you have to be wondering by now, okay, but is DEI training important? DEI training sounds like something that should not be done anywhere at any business for any reason. Let's look into that. From betterup.com, three reasons why diversity training is important. Ah, maybe I've got it wrong. Chances are you've worked with someone who doesn't look like you or has different backgrounds, different beliefs, or practices a different religion. Our differences are what make us all unique and offer a richer set of experiences and perspectives against any situation. The benefits of diversity are undeniable. Now, they don't exactly make the case very well that the benefits of diversity are undeniable. Yes, 
It's true that when people are different, then they're not the same. How that benefits an organization? We've never really seen proof of it. We've seen a lot of claims, but let's go on. Here, they've compiled three reasons why diversity training programs in the workplace have a positive impact on the company culture. One, increased employee engagement. When people feel excluded, employee engagement suffers. We know from data that an engaged workforce outperforms a disengaged workforce. According to Gallup, a highly engaged workforce can outperform peers by 147% in earnings per share. By implementing diversity training programs, your organization will foster inclusivity and increase overall employee engagement. Well, if you want your employees fighting with each other, I don't know how that's gonna increase profits, but sure, okay. Wait a minute, you can actually get this too. Improved employee retention, according to Forbes. And by the way, don't rely on Forbes for anything. They have some of the most ridiculous diversity articles in there. They have articles on diversity called Decentering Whiteness. They even had to change some of the titles of some of their articles because they were that outrageous and really inappropriate. But according to Forbes, people who don't feel included in the company's structure and mission are less likely to invest the time and energy in the organization's future. Employees who feel a sense of belonging are more likely to stay with an organization. Diversity training programs help to increase that sense of belonging amongst employees and overall can help improve your retention rates. Well, I, I don't think that really agrees with what we just learned in this prior article, but let's see what else they can teach us. Diversity training can give us positive systemic change. It's no secret that our systems and existing power structures have been built for some, but they certainly don't work for all. Diversity training's first step is education and awareness. Put into practice, diversity training defined broadly can help change things like your organization's hiring practices. Sure, it helps you to discriminate against people and not hire based on merit. You can change where talent is sourced. You can take actions to increase board or leadership diversity and more. These actions positively change a system so it works for all people, not just some. It looks like it changes the system so that it doesn't actually work for anyone except for the people that are pushing division, unhappiness, aggravation, and uncomfortable feelings. These are the four types of diversity training to make sure you don't get any access to and stay far away from. Awareness training. Oftentimes, awareness training is the type of early adopter diversity training that's highly effective for most, if not all, workforces. Awareness training is essentially the first step to creating change in your organization. It gives employees an overview of workplace and or organization demographics, education around sexual orientation, gender, race and racial minorities, ethnicity, and more. It's actually none of your business what the sexual orientation is of any of the people that you work with. You may wind up discovering that because you know people and you work with them for a long time, but it's none of your business and your personal life is none of their business either. You can also get an overview in education and awareness around workplace equity which also means nothing. Everyone should get paid based on what they do and they should be rewarded for what they do appropriately. A workplace should be merit-based and competitive. And if your workplace is not merit-based and it's not competitive, you ought to be going to work somewhere else. Don't work somewhere where they judge you based on your skin color. Many diversity trainings just stop there, making people aware of their actions and how that is experienced by others but this is a valuable opportunity to drive awareness of the benefits to everyone in the company of having a truly diverse workforce where people can contribute at their best. Okay, none of that makes any sense, but at least we understand what they're trying to talk about. There's of course, skills-based diversity training as well, focusing on specific actions people at different levels across your workforce can take to practice the skills of inclusion to ensure all employees are equipped with practical skills that breed belonging. This is like teaching very young children to play together. Adults know how to treat each other. And if they don't, they can go work somewhere else. And just to make sure you're following their instructions, they have diversity audits. It's important to understand where you're starting to determine where you're going. That's where diversity audits come in. Diversity audits are regular checkpoints, usually run by HR professionals, but it requires some significant training to do effectively. When done right, these audits help assess colleague relationships and work environment. So you're supposed to judge how people are interacting with each other, jot it down, write it down, audit those interactions and their workplace relationships and get involved in the middle of that. By the way, as if people had nothing better to do than to worry about being audited based on their relationships with their fellow employees. Manage employees' attitudes towards coworkers and ensure that company policies are fully observed. 
If there's anything inappropriate going on in a company, it can just be reported to HR. HR makes a note of it. They talk to people if they need to. That's bad already because people need to take care of themselves and be able to take care of themselves in a work environment. But that's something that HR handles. You don't need diversity auditors for that. Diversity audits can identify any type of discrimination. They can also encourage employee transparency. If you think that sounds advanced, it's not advanced. In fact, it's not even basic. This is basic diversity training. We know sometimes it's best to start with the basics. Basic diversity training has a simple goal. Create respect and empathy within your workforce. In a basic diversity training program, it's common to find the below topics. Identifying company values and how DEI embodies those values. Anti-racism training, which is racist training. Anti-sexism training, which must be sexist training. Educating about sexual orientation and gender identities. None of your business. Stay out of people's personal sexual orientations and their personal special identities. It's none of your business. Cultural sensitivity training. Again, just treat other people the way you want to be treated. If that's not good enough, you're not working at the right place. Human resource compliance training. That is just making threats at employees. Human resources gives you an outline. You can discuss it with human resources. If you have any questions, you don't need training based on complying with human resources. It's common sense. It's common decency. Anything beyond that is highly inappropriate. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.